Hello everyone, um, we're just currently waiting on everyone to join the webinar before we officially kick off. So we'll just wait for a few more moments um, to make sure everyone is in the webinar. There's a few people still just joining us, so we'll just wait for another moment. Great, so I think we'll just um, get everyone kicked off. So hello and welcome. Um, this is the first of our information webinars on the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund in partnership with Business to Arts. Um, so I'm just gonna bring us through the presentation today. So just kind of a general introduction and a bit of a kind of housekeeping. Um, this webinar is being fully recorded and it will be available on the Business to Arts YouTube channel following the webinar this afternoon. So if you don't have a chance to stay for the full duration of the webinar, or if you want to go back and review anything in the future, um, it will be fully available online um, through the Business to Arts website. It's just some general housekeeping at the moment. Um, we are using the Zoom webinar function today. So you cannot see each other um, who are here in attendance on the webinar. You're only going to see um, ourselves who are the presenters and just introduce yourselves. So my name is Eileen Hanready. I am the Senior Manager of Membership and Projects at Business to Arts. Uh, my colleague Hannah Lamont, who is the Membership and Project Manager at Business to Arts, is also with us, as well as Bevan Cody, who is the Corporate Reputation Manager at ESB, who are generously supporting the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund. And we're delighted to have everyone here today. Um, just kind of a quick note as we go through, um, we are um, very welcoming of any and all questions that you might have. Please pop the questions into the question and answer box, which you can see at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we will be collating all of the questions that we get in and we will be answering all of those towards the end of the webinar. But feel free at any point during the webinar that you might have a question spring to mind, just pop it in the Q&A box and Hannah will be able to bring it out uh, for general discussion at the end of the webinar. Um, and then finally, just to go through the agenda quite briefly, uh, we're just going to touch um, very briefly on Business to Arts, who we are and the work that we do. We're going to give you a very brief and general overview of the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund itself. We're going to touch on the eligibility requirements and criteria for the fund, give you a brief sense of how to apply for the fund, and then dive into those questions that you might have throughout the webinar. And just to note, we do have a frequently asked questions document available on our website, which has got um, lots of questions that we've already received in and that is going to be a live document. So any questions that we receive here, we'll be able to update that document thereafter. So at any point that you might have questions that you feel someone else might have asked before, do feel free to always check our frequently asked questions document because there may be some answers in there or even some questions that you hadn't previously thought about that someone else has kindly asked and you get that information as well. So just going to touch briefly upon Business to Arts for those of you who may not know who we are. We are a membership based charitable organization who really um, work at the epicenter of the arts and business community to try and broker, enable and support creative partnerships between businesses, individuals and the arts. So we work with our corporate members on a range of um, services such as art sponsorship, commissioning, event programming, corporate social responsibility programs, and also any kind of internal or external communication requirements that they may have, as well as their donor advice funds, of which the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund is one. Um, you may have seen some activity that we've been doing recently um, between ESB, as well as Women on Walls, which was a campaign with Accenture and DCU. And we do lots of member events throughout the year where we try and bring all of our members together to support them and have a quick chat and see how we can help enable those partnerships come to life. We also work with artists and arts organizations providing a range of training opportunities and coaching to help them diversify their income streams, grow audiences and help them to develop their strategic planning and programming. We are known fundamentally for our in-house programs, which include the Business to Arts Awards, uh, which will be 30 years old next year, which is our annual showcase of leading corporate and cultural partnerships on the island of Ireland. Funded.ie, which is a crowdfunding platform, which has just hit 10 years old in March and has enabled um, over 1,400 creative projects to come to life. Our annual CEO forum, which happens every year at the back end of the year in partnership with PwC. And then finally, Newstream, which is our fundraising capacity developing program. And we're going to be moving into the fourth phase of our fundraising fellowship program. And more details will be announced with that in the coming months. You can find out all of this information and more on our website. 
So we're just going to move on now um, to give you a brief sense of the ESB Brighter Future strategy. And Bevan's going to kindly jump in and give us a bit more in depth about that to let um, everyone know what ESB are trying to achieve with this fund. So um, thank you very much, Eileen. Just to start off, I suppose I sometimes make an assumption that everybody knows who, who ESB are, but um, that's not always the case increasingly. So um, I suppose ESB is the, the is a group of um, companies now at this stage comprising Electric Ireland, ESB Networks, um, NIE Networks in Northern Ireland, and ESB International. And um, we operate right across the electricity value trade chain um, to bring energy to, to customers across the UK and Ireland. And I suppose just in terms of our brighter future strategy, um, I'm just going to go back into history for a moment, if you'll permit me, but our first power station was built at Ardna Crusher in 1927. And so we've been operating for over 90 years, but really the driving force behind that project was a man called Thomas McLaughlin, who was a 28 year old engineer who saw the potential of the electricity to completely transform lives and had a vision for um, really taking Ireland out of a lot of the, the drudgery and economic hardship of the time um, through the electrification of society and bringing electricity to every corner of Ireland. And he, he later spoke about that time whenever Ardna Crusher was being built. And he, he spoke about it, it becoming his mission in life and do, having this being driven by this passionate desire to do everything in his power to build up the country from de, with, through development with, from within. And you can see that like, real sense of purpose um, that, he, that he had through the advertising and everything else from the time. There's an ad that talks about lightening human burdens and brightening human lives. So that is very much who, who ESB is and continues to be today. Um, and it's where our Brighter Future strategy has come from. It is very much the inspiration, that founding purpose for our Brighter Future strategy today. And we, that strategy recognizes that climate change is the biggest challenge facing humanity and that electricity has a really key role to play in um, tackling climate change and reducing carbon emissions. And that we have this sense that anything is possible if we harness this collective sense of purpose and apply all of our efforts to addressing that, we can really affect big change. So today our mission is about creating a brighter future by leading the transition to a low carbon society powered by clean electricity. And we've, we've made great strides in doing that over the last 15 years or so. Since 2005, we've reduced the carbon emissions from our electricity generation by 64%. And we're aiming to reach net zero emissions by 2050. We're investing in onshore and offshore wind and in, in solar. We're transforming the network to cope with all of the changes and the technolo technological challenges that that brings and new demands. And we're developing new products and services that will enable our customers to live low carbon lives. So um, there is the, it's a very exciting time for us. And I suppose the other thing to note is that um, there is huge potential to do more with electricity in the future. At the moment, electricity accounts for about 20% of the power that we use in the country. Um, so by taking carbon out of the electricity generation, we can address about 20% of Ireland's carbon emissions. However, if we use that clean electricity to electrify other high carbon sectors like transport and heating, um, we, can, we can become about 50% of the, of the solution. And it really is a massive technological challenge, but it's also a huge human challenge as well, because the way that people are, it will interact with the electricity and system in the future will change and there's a lot of choices that people will make over the coming years that will determine the pace and scale of the change that can can be affected and not all of those changes are going to be easy so you know whether it's accepting new infrastructure structure into your community like a wind farm or making the choice to you know potentially pay more to drive an electric car than an internal combustion engine car all of those things will take small choices, but well, big choices by, by individuals that will really be part of the solution, right down to the level of determining how, how much you're going to embrace new technologies like your smart, your smart meter. So, um, you know, that is, I suppose that's, that's the challenge that we have, but there's a huge upside to this in so far as a clean electric future won't just deliver 
benefits in terms of the environment and in terms of carbon. It's also going to bring huge benefits in terms of air quality. Like people who live in all electric homes find that they're sicker less. They, you know, people with asthma have less problems. It will deliver benefits in terms of convenience, efficiency, job opportunities. So there's there's a big bright side to this. And the challenge that we have as a utility sometimes is being able to bring that to life and actually being able to paint that vivid picture of what a, a brighter future looks like and what it will mean for people. So through this fund, we're hoping that um, we will be in a position to support creative partnerships, so project around projects that engage communities in the energy transition. Energy has always been a really low interest category. It's not a subject that a lot of people want to talk about very regularly, but it will impact on everybody's lives. And it is something that's really important for, for everybody. So we want to start conversations. We want to get people to think about this and we want to inspire people to be part of, part of the solution. Um, there's loads more detail on our website about our strategy and there's always people around. I'm happy to answer any of their questions later in the webinar. So um, that's, that's it from me, Eileen, I'll pass back to you. Perfect. Thanks very much, Bevan. Um, and just to note for anyone who has just joined us in the past few moments, um, this webinar has been fully recorded and will be available on our website through our YouTube channel after um, kind of after lunchtime today. Um, and if you do have any questions, um, maybe from something that Bevan has mentioned there, or what Han is going to touch upon now, do feel free to pop a question into the Q&A box and we will revisit those questions all towards the end of this webinar. So just going to move forward. Um, so Hannah is just going to go through and um, just give you a brief overview about the fund itself and all of the nitty gritty around eligibility requirements and criteria. Thanks, Hannah. Hello, everyone. Hi, um, my name is Hannah Lamont. I'm a manager of membership and projects with Business to Arts, and I'm delighted to see great turnout today for everyone um, tuning in today. Um, so just to talk a bit about the fund itself. Um, so the uh, Brighter Future Arts Fund is an all island arts fund and it aligns with the SB's Brighter Future Strategy, which Bevan just led us through, of promoting environmental sustainability in diverse and ambitious ways. Um, the fund will distribute up to €140,000 to artworks and art projects across the island of Ireland, that's both the Republic and Northern Ireland. Um, and these projects will be taking place uh, between 2022 and 2023. So the fund is open to all art forms. Um, uh, there's a, a variety, a, a list of, of art forms that we have compiled, but essentially if, if you are an artist, you are uh, eligible to apply. Um, the fund aims to support artists that are uh, working with a partner organization. So um, we define this to be uh, any kind of supporting body that might be a festival, a venue, an arts organization, a funding body. And um, there are more sort of uh, definitions of this um, on our frequently asked questions document. Um, and if you have any concerns around this, um, please feel free to reach out or stick it in the questions box there and we'll provide cl clarification there. Um, we would like to see artworks and art projects um, coming into this fund that respond to the themes of what does a brighter future look like? Um, themes of around a low carbon future, uh, best practice in environmental sustainability, addressing an environmental issues and sustainable development goals, and enhancing participation of communities and audiences uh, with regards to questions around the environment. Um, in terms of timeline and specifics for the Arts Fund, um, the deadline to apply is Wednesday, September 8th, 2021 at 5 p.m. on that day um, and we will hopefully be letting people know whether they've been successful or unsuccessful before October 31st of this year 2021. Uh, we would like to see projects take place between March 1st of 2022 and December 31st of 2023 so it's a really long uh, lead-in time um, and lots of scope there for bigger projects to develop um, and Applicants can request grants in the range of €20,000 to €40,000 or their sterling equivalent. Um, so we expect to fund between four and six applications with the uh, funding that we have available. Um, and uh, so again, if anyone has any questions about any of these specifics, please put them in the question and answer box. Um, I'll actually move on to the next slide, if you wouldn't mind, Eileen, and I can speak a bit about the, yes, thank you, the eligibility criteria and requirements. So, 
This fund will aim to support new artworks and arts projects that respond to the themes, as I stated before. Um, we would like to see applications that involve a professional artist. So now a professional artist we have defined as someone who has specialized training in the artistic field, not necessarily academic, but specialized training. Um, an artist would be also considered as a recognized professional by their peers or artists that are working in the same field or tradition. Um, a professional artist is committed to devoting more time to artistic activity, um, if possible, financially. And um, a, a professional artist may have a history of public presentation or publication. So there are our definitions of the kinds of artists and professional artists we would like to see applying to this um, fund. But again, if there are sort of amateur artists or uh, community based organizations, um, we would just like to see that you are partnering with a professional artist in any of the applications you're submitting. Um, so with that said, sort of developing creative partnerships is a key part of our mission at Business Twarts. And that's why we have specified that we would like to see uh, artists working in partnership in an active partnership um, with a partner organization. Um, and, and this relationship, it should be mutually beneficial relationship, um, something that engages or reaches an intended audience um, and that there is um, an increased uh, scope or depth or, or reach um, with the artwork or arts project through this partnership. So that might look like you engaging with your partner organization's audience or using their resources to you know, reach further, uh, further people or, or participants in that, in that regard. Um, applications that apply should have appropriate fees for professional artists involved. And we have advised that 40% of the overall project budget be allocated to artist fees. Um, and um, this will be um, outlined in the, the budget section of the application form. Um, we would also like to see that applications are engaging the public or involving um, communities or audiences in the conversations around what a brighter future looks like. That's a key part of this fund. Um, and we would also like to see that applications are, are for projects that are taking place between March of 2022 and December of 2023. Um, so is there any questions so far in any of those things? There are a couple that are coming in, so I'll, uh, I'll respond to some if I can, and otherwise we'll, we'll answer questions towards the end of the, the webinar. Um, so Perfect. I think that's, that's me there, Eileen. Yes, no problem. Thanks, Hannah. Um, so just to briefly um, move on then to the actual form itself. So in order to submit um, an application to the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund, it's a fully online application form. Um, and the address there, businesstoarts.awardsplatform.com is the address to go to. And that's easily accessible via the Business to Arts website. There's a big enter here button that you just click and it brings you straight through. Um, this is the same platform that we have previously used for the Business to Arts Funds and other arts funds. So if you have already registered per a previous fund or perhaps a bursary application to the awards that's associated with that email address, you're going to already be in our system. So you may just maybe have to kind of um, click forgot password if you maybe just have forgotten what the password was and that'll bring you back in. Um, otherwise, if you're a brand new um, person to the application form and the portal, you just have to register your details you will get a verification email that possibly might go into your spam. So just make sure that you're able to kind of find that email and click the link. Otherwise you won't be able to start the entry process. However, if you're having any difficulties around that kind of email or the verification link isn't coming through, just give us a quick email and I'll pop up the email address at the end and we'll be able to uh, manually sort that out for you on the back end. Um, whenever you have um, fully logged in to the award platform, it's as I said, it's a fully online application form and um, there are very specific questions um, and fields for you to fill in. The application does save as you go. So if you want to maybe spend a bit of time on it today and come back to it tomorrow, feel free, just kind of save your progress as you go along. Just click save and next. The system does be saving automatically in the background, but just make sure that you've also clicked save to make sure that all the content you've popped in is all there and is safe and secure for the next time when you log back in. One of the main things to keep a note um, on and a small eye on is the word count. Um, a number of the questions have very specific word counts because we're trying to ask people to be as um, you know, short and sweet in your kind of answers to these questions and give us the most um, relevant information um, kind of in a, in a good kind of punchy, impactful way as you can. So just always keep an eye on the word count in case you're going over. It will flash up on the screen that you've got over the word count and just means that you won't be able to submit the application until you trim that word count back down. So just keep an eye on that. 
And then a number of the questions are mandatory. So there are some which are optional. But whenever you're going through, it will state which are the optional questions and which are the mandatory ones. So just check as you're going through before you try and click submit that you have run through all the questions that you've kind of filled everything in. And then whenever you click submit entry, it's going to come into us with no problems whatsoever. As Hannah said, the deadline for entries is 5 p.m. on Wednesday, the 8th of September. We would always recommend that you try and get your application in a wee bit earlier than that, just to make sure that you're ahead of the game, have everything fully, safely and securely submitted into us with no kind of problems, as we know that there typically is, is a bit of a, a last minute rush at the end. So just make sure that if you can get it in um, beforehand, um, but otherwise it's five o'clock on Wednesday, the 8th of September. So hopefully that will ring a bell with everyone with them um, back to school and September is, is a good time to be kind of reinvigorating our plans for the year to come. So just gonna, so that's kind of everything with that information. Again, if you have any technical questions, drop it into the Q&A box or you can email us at uh, Brighter Future Arts Fund at businesstowarts.ie and we can answer any questions at that point. But I think we have a few questions coming in now. So um, we're just going to go on to the Q&A session and yeah, keep coming through with your questions and we'll answer as many as we can here. Um, yeah. If there are any questions which maybe are a wee bit more substantial in nature and we might need to have a bit of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, Hannah or myself will be able to yeah. reach out to you directly afterwards and have a, a phone call as um, some questions may need a bit more um, teasing out to get uh, the, re the relevant information um, to you. So Hannah, is there any kind of yeah. burning so questions coming there's through? There's uh, been a couple coming in. Um, uh, one here uh, saying, um, must proposals take the theme of electricity or car carbon neutrality um, or would proposals that look at wider environmental or sustainability questions be considered equally? Um, I think it's important to acknowledge um, sort of what Bevan ran us through in her segment about ESV's um, brighter future strategy. So while sustainability and the environment is key, I think there's there's an, an element here of um, of, you know, electricity, carbon neutrality, as well as uh, as being important to this fund. Um, Eileen or Bevan, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I'll come in there, Hannah. Like, I, su I suppose really we would like to see projects that engage people in with energy in some way ideally in the project yeah thank you i think that's i think that's clear and i think that um maria if you have any further specific questions um about your specific project it, it's hard to um sort of speak definitively about projects when we don't know more about them but if you do have any further questions about your specific project, you can, you can, you can email us at brighterfutureartsfund at businesstoarts.ie and I'd be happy to go through any specific project questions in that remit. Um, uh, Eileen, can there be more than one professional artist with each application? So in terms of this, um, we would always suggest to maybe um, go with one application it would be preferable um, just in terms of being able to kind of fully commit to an application with your partner organization that you're really putting your best foot forward um, with one application. If there are several artists involved, maybe in an artist collective or in a group, they can all come in together as one um, kind of one side of that coin with the other partner organization. But definitely in terms of um, professional artists, we would suggest that maybe if you want to just partner on one specific um, application, that's probably best. But if there are a number of you as part of a collective, that's perfectly fine. Just please do outline um, as best you can what everyone will be bringing to the table in terms of helping the project manifest, develop, and actually really engage the, the communities in that question around what a brighter future looks like and how everyone is working together to kind of enact that project. Um, Catherine Hearn has a question. Um, can the partner organization apply on behalf of the artist or does it have to be the artist applying themselves? Um, so Catherine, both, uh, it can be either the partner organization or the artist applying, um, either both work. Um, if you want to apply in a collaborative way, um, we do have the application questions available in a reference document on our website, um, business2arts.ie. Um, and so you're welcome to work together, you know, offline on it and then uh, bring all your answers to the table through the actual online um, platform. Uh, but yes, that would be, uh, you would both be able to apply or, or separately one or the other. Um, another question here, um, if you are an organization, do you need to have the artist selected in the application? And also, can you work with more than one artist? Uh, Eileen, you've kind of showed this already, but maybe you could uh, specifically 
answer yeah. the selected artist piece. Sure. Um, so if you are an organization who are submitting an application to the fund, um, if you maybe don't have the artist selected from the outset, but you have an idea of who it might be, you just maybe haven't got them kind of exactly pinned down, just make reference to that in your form. You can just let us know that you're planning to work with this particular artist if all works out, um, because there might be just some kind of issues, particularly over summer, trying to get people pinned down with annual leave or perhaps they've taken a step back from the laptop for now. Um, but do just kind of try as best as you can make reference to who the artist will be that you're working with so that the assessment panel are able to kind of judge the application on its full merits and that we have as much information as to the experience and um, skill set of the artist who's going to help the partner organization bring that project to kind of full manifestation and fruition. Um, similarly, you can work with more than one artist and um, just do kind of flag to us um, who those other artists might be. And do bear in mind that if you're working with several artists, um, possibly there's a potential there that if one of those artists may want to work individually with a separate partner organization, there may just be a question there about their ability to fully commit to um, more than one project and have that come to fruition, which is something that the panel will be looking at in terms of the feasibility of projects and getting them um, over the line and actually up and fully running as Hannah said it is quite a long timeline so if you do have an artist that's maybe working with a different organization just flag it in the application about your dates and then the panel has as much information as is possible as to the feasibility of the project. Thank you Eileen. Um, we've had a question around um, ESB um, and making an engineer available for consultation around any technical issues if there was Electri uh, if there was an electrified installation. Um, I think Eileen, we've kind of, we've, we've touched on this uh, in some documents. It, this would be sort of subject to assessment and subject to involvement uh, after the assessment process. But uh, do we, do you, would you like to add anything there? Um, I think the main thing is that if you're thinking about any kind of electrical installation or um, any kind of requirement for AV or other energy use, just make a full note of that in your budget in terms of, you know, always having a line item available for the need for that. Whether or not um, ESB are able to make an engineer available, there will be a cost involved for that engineer's time to come out. Or if ESB aren't able to make someone available for consultation, you have the that budget item there that if it needs to be a third party um, engineer that comes out, that's what that's what, um, what will be able to happen. Um, but definitely give us as much information around the requirements to get your um, installation kind of fully electrified or hooked up or whatever it might be. Is it mains power? Is it going to be renewable? energy sources and then we'll be able to once we go through the assessment stage and selection stage we can have a further conversation in terms of what supports may be available from ESB at that stage. I don't know Bevan if you want to jump in there and offer any Yeah that's notes. perfect darling because it very much would depend on the installation the skills required and scale so yeah the yeah. more information the better but yeah, I guess the thing is, don't presume that there will be an engineer available. So always pop it into your budget that you're going to need an engineer to support in some manner. And um, just so that we know that um, you've fully considered your budget and it's completely rounded off and you, we don't have um, additional costs that we maybe haven't um, considered or thought about. Thank you both. Um, are there any restrictions with working with communities that have already been involved in schemes such as the SEAI energy communities? or have received just transition funding. Um, in, in my mind, we have, we have left this open to uh, any um, projects, whether they are requesting 100% of funding or a portion of funding towards their project. Um, so uh, I wouldn't see a, an issue in this regard. Eileen, do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, I wouldn't have anything. Um, the main thing is that if you're already involved in a scheme or have received funding from elsewhere, try and make it as clear as is possible um, in the application form what um, proportion of funding you're bringing to the um, in, in, to this particular project from that other funds and um, just so that the assessment panel clearly know um, how much funding you're requesting from the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund and how that maybe sits alongside other funding that you've been in receipt of elsewhere. Um, but certainly we wouldn't have any um, kind of problem with that unless um, Bevan has a different um, take from ESB. But No, we'd be able we are very happy to see projects from anywhere in the country and, um, you know, certainly areas that are affected by the transition and are, you know, potential recipients of just transition funding. We'd be very happy to see those communities involved. Yeah. Great. Thank you both. Um, 
John asks, uh, could you list some previous partner organizations that have been successfully funded in the past, please? So um, this is our first um, donor advised arts fund working in partnership with the SB. But in other arts funds, um, we have seen um, community organizations being funded. Um, we have seen um, arts organizations being receiving funding. We've re we have seen festivals receiving funding. Um, and if you want to learn more about uh, other donor advised funds that we've worked on, it would be business to arts.ie um, or you could drop us an email directly at brighter future arts fund at business to arts.ie and we'd be happy to give it give more specific information there as well um regarding yeah, I think, the sorry sorry Arlene go sorry, ahead I'm just gonna <laughs> jump in quickly um in terms of a partner organization it's essentially any organization institution agency or other kind of body that's going to be able to support you as an artist to actually help a project come to full fruition and manifestation in whatever location it is that you're trying to do it around the country. Um, we've had libraries in the past, we've had art galleries, we've had community centres. It's essentially any um, institution or kind of you know locale that can help you, um, whether it's providing space, communication support, additional check requirements, um, just additional bodies to help things get off the ground. So basically any and every kind of organisation that you could probably think of would be um, eligible as a partner organization if they can contribute and commit to, to helping you make the project a reality. Thanks, Eileen. Um, so regarding the 40% of overall budget to artist fees, is that a minimum amount or can it be bigger? And also can it include production or crew fees? Great. Um, so in terms of that question, yeah, so that would be our kind of our base minimum amount that um, one of our main objectives here at Business to Arts is that artists are paid equitably for their time, effort and creativity that's involved in helping projects uh, come to life. So 40% would be your kind of minimum requirement of the overall budget. Um, you can certainly include um, kind of other creative practitioners in there, such as production or other photographers, maybe film artists who are going to help you maybe project something onto a wall, um, whatever that might be. But we are just going to always look at that at least 40 percent certainly it can be higher um but also don't go too far the other side that maybe all of your funding is going to be toward artist fees because we're going to have to see equipment costs insurance costs health and safety all the other things that are required to help a project and um, come to life so do um yeah always think 40 percent is your base minimum and then how much then is left to actually help the project um come to full full life um Someone else asks, um, can an artist and partner organization work with schools? Absolutely. We would love to see any kind of community engagement uh, or public engagement. Um, and if that means working uh, with a school, that would be wonderful to see. Um, so, yeah, that would be eligible to apply. Um, another question, is it possible to apply with a November or December 2021 project in mind? Um, the difficulty here is that um, it would be a bit too tight for us to turn around uh, distributing of funds uh, for a November uh, project. Um, so we have indicated that projects should aim to take place between December 1st. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm getting my dates mixed up. Eileen, could you support me here? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so really, it's going to be from the 1st of March of next year March, right through to December of the next year, 2023. Um, as Hannah said, um, we are only going to be able to kind of notify all of the artists of the assessment panel's decision by the end of October. So it, it'll be quite a short turnaround time to get agreements signed, um, funding applications all run through the bank account um, for you to be able to kick something off this side of Christmas. So that's where we're trying to give you a bit of a, a long or lead-in time to get everything fully set up and ready from the time you've got that good news that you've been selected and have been funded and then everything would kick off then for March of next year a kind of you know a big springtime kind of um, extravaganza next year so unfortunately not November December this year but mm -hmm. if you can maybe tweak your timeline depending on what your project is if it could be November December next year maybe if it's season specific do just bear that in mind that you can obviously fluctuate and um, your project might be able to take place next year instead. Um, the final question in the chat box here is, do artists need to be Irish or live in Ireland uh, to apply for the funding? Um, we actually haven't specified this, but we would like to see the projects have a majority of the uh, project participants are based on the island of Ireland. Uh, we have not specified anything with regards to nationality, um, but we would like to see projects that are uh, happening on the island of Ireland and that uh, have a majority of project participants are based on the island of Ireland. Eileen, do you want to add anything in, in specifically there? 
Um, yeah, I think it, it's probably important to bear in mind that um, with COVID and our new kind of approach of maybe going online or bringing in online or digital elements into projects, um, there can certainly be an international um, audience whether it's uh, broadcasting something online, streaming it, inviting um, thoughts and views from people elsewhere to kind of bear fruit here. Um, but as Hannah said, we would like the kind of majority of the artists involved and the participants who are actually going to be able to engage with the work in a more wholesome and kind of comprehensive way to be on the island of Ireland. But certainly if you're bringing in expertise from people who are abroad, if there's a certain um, kind of creative practitioner who really is involved in this area that you want to bring in their point of view or their expertise or voice, certainly do that. Um, but we do want to see um, projects take, take place on the, the island of Ireland with potentially an international aspect through an online or digital reach. Mm -hmm. Um, those are all the questions we've received through our Q&A box, unless there are any more at the moment. Um, but I might just actually ask a few questions of Bevan while we're while we're here. Um, some of these questions came through our email. Um, so Bevan, um, in terms of um, projects happening outside of Dublin, because I know Dublin is kind of a big central hub, uh, in terms of ESB's point of view, would you like to see projects happening, you know, regional basis and, and that kind of way? Um, anywhere on the island of Ireland, um, ESB operates pretty much in the four corners, north and south of Ireland. So we're happy to see projects coming through from anywhere. Fantastic. And in fact, the more the more regional areas, the better, I would say. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's that's all the questions we have received uh, at the moment. Uh, but again, as we've said, we have our email address there, Brighter Future Arts Fund at business2arts.ie. Um, we're available there for all your questions. Um, you're also um, welcome to call us. Um, I'm going to forget our phone number now. <laughs> I'll call it out and I'll put it in the chat box as well. It, we are a Dublin number, so 01662-9238. We would be happy to take your calls or uh, emails as well. And um, feel free to, to reach out or, or send any questions. Um, uh, the application uh, process will be open until Wednesday, uh, September 8th, 5 p.m. So we have a good bit of time, but don't let the summer, summer run away from you. Um, and, and do uh, let us know if you have any other questions. Um, and other than that, we do have another second webinar coming up um, on Thursday. Uh, that will dig into a bit more of the application process in terms of grant writing and um, in terms of how to uh, correctly, you know, put in your budget application and all of that. So if you're um, interested and available to attend, it's 1 p.m. on Thursday and you can register via our website, business to arts.ie. Um, Eileen, do you have anything else you want to add before we wrap things up? Uh, no, I just want to say thanks to everyone for taking the time to sit with us on a very sunny and hot <laughs> lunchtime. Um, thanks very much to Bevan and everyone at ESB for this fund. Um, it's a terrific experience to be able to work on this with you. And I know that we're delighted and excited and really thrilled to see what projects are going to come in and what will be funded. Um, so just thanks to Bevan and the whole team at ESB for that. And yeah, as Hannah said, anyone who's any other questions um, that might have, you know, if you have something tingling in the background um, over the coming days and weeks as you think about this lovely sunny summer that we have and how we can best harness this energy and the brighter thoughts that we have for the years and decades to come let Absolutely. us know um but do reach out to us as hannah said we have a second webinar on thursday so do feel free to join or come along or that also will be recorded and available online but um i don't think we have anything else so just thanks very much to bevan myra and all the team at esb yeah. um hannah thanks for your participation and everyone who's joined us today so thank you everyone. very much thank you bye thanks.